Crystal Palace have never won on this ground. They haven't even managed a goal in their last four league visits. Liverpool's home record, the cornerstone on which Anfield title seasons are traditionally built. Just one home defeat last season, one in 88, none in 86. That's the standard. And in the last couple of months alone, Arsenal and Queen's Park Rangers have won here. Ten home points dropped since the turn of the year. It just could prove the difference. Ray Houghton. Beardsley. Nickel. shackles of his marker to head a second goal for Liverpool Captain Strauss from Steve Nicholl and John Barnes defeated both the offside trap and the night-long attentions of Alan Pardew to head his 18th goal of the season Crystal Palace have marked up so tightly but they let Barnes go there the flag stayed down and Barnes made no mistake Ten minutes of the second half gone, and John Barnes makes it 2-0 for Liverpool. Seven, seven, seven. That's four goals in his last three matches. And Palace really have got to commit themselves now. <laughs> the substitution's being made, and young Simon Osborne's night comes to an end and the far more experienced Gary Thompson replaces him. And that's company for Ian right up front. Gillespie. Salako first to it. Hanger for Gary Thompson. Robillard couldn't quite gather it at the first attempt. He may just have carried it outside the penalty area at the second. Referee standing and watching, happy for play to continue. Liverpool have Barnes and Ablett to spare to take themselves out of a bit of a trench. And here they come on the break with Houghton. And here is Barnes again. Ray Houghton dancing his way back into the path of Barnes. And the driven cross of Southgate and away for the corner kick. Liverpool, after a little lull in their performance, suddenly... Moving through the gears very quickly again. Ray Houghton setting up Barnes. They'd only needed a touch, and the touch came from the Crystal Palace man. Beardsley. Headed away by Shaw. Ablett. Beardsley again. Staunton. Ablett. In rush. Staunton, Nicholl is the furthest forward at the moment, he's in rush, just offside, it's reminding us he can finish by scooping the ball over Martin into the goal, and that is not number 301. Collymore. Palace throw. McGoldrick. Rush quick to the ball. Oh, and McGoldrick was tripped by his own player, Southgate, there, and Staunton now taking advantage. He's got Peter Beersley in oceans of space to his right. Beersley with a chance. Good save by Nigel Martin. And he denied Liverpool the corner. Liverpool were a bit fortunate to get that chance because. Eddie McGoldrick was fouled by his own player and Staunton was suddenly clear. But Beersley couldn't take advantage. John Barnes. Steve Nicholl. Ray Houghton popping up from a hole in the ground. And McGoldrick has run the ball to his own net. And Liverpool lead by three goals to nil. Ray Houghton with that pop-up run made it possible. But Eddie McGoldrick has had a great night really for Crystal Palace. 
could do nothing but turn the ball into his own goal. Just three minutes left to play, and there goes Houghton down the centre of the field, and that's what embarrassed Crystal Palace, and McGoldrick stretching got the final touch past his own goalkeeper, and he just couldn't get back there to salvage it. But it's been a very smooth and authoritative Liverpool performance. Crystal Palace have come a long, long way since the early throws of last season when they were routed here. They're not quite far enough yet. Peter Beardsley. Barnes. Beardsley again. Now they're going to finish with a flourish. Ian Rush! I don't know if Nigel Martin has anything to do with it. Smart save, but a very, very smart attack. Here's Collymore. Morby against Wright, which is a bit of a mismatch for pace, but Morby just got there. And got a kick in the bargain. Liverpool's next game is at Chelsea a week on Saturday, then they face the two cup finalists, Forest away and Spurs at home. It's an inviting run-in. Offside. In the words of the song, their title dreams have been tossed and blown once or twice this year. And creating chances deep into this game. Nigel Martin denying Ian Rush. That's the final whistle. Liverpool turn up the title heat and on the notch. Graham Sunez notches the second win of his first week in charge of the Anfield title charge. Ian Rush scores his 300th club goal, the best of the night. John Barnes made it two with his head before Eddie McGoldrick's own goal sealed it. Another 11 days will pass before Championship Hollis hostilities are now renewed. Time enough for Arsenal to feel the pressure of this result. Liverpool 3, Crystal Palace 0. Thanks, Clive. Well, that is only half of the story tonight, so it's straight over to Highbury for Arsenal against Queen's Park Rangers, a crowd of over 40,000, and commentator Brian Moore. 20 years ago, Don Howe helped Bertie Mee plot Arsenal's League and Cup double triumph, but tonight Don's emerging QPR side aimed to put the Championship's kids under his old club. It's a fascinating prospect with Arsenal having experienced a slight wobble and even David Seaman, who's been a giant all season in goal for the Gunners, looking human after all. Well, David naturally takes his place in the Arsenal side that sees the return of Anders Limpar to the left flank. He was left out after that cup semi-final defeat. David Hillier returns to the midfield after missing two matches with a gash leg, but there's no place for Michael Thomas. Park Rangers, meanwhile, have defender Alan McDonald in the side, his second match after a five-month layoff with injury. He'll be marking Alan Smith, so a number nine then playing in defence, and number five, Darren Peacock, leaving his defensive duties to play up front in the continued absence of Les Ferdinand. Peacock, an occasional striker with his previous club, Hereford. Paul Parker continues his comeback as one of the subs. Referee tonight, John Moles of Irith in Kent. And, as you'd expect, a noisy partisan crowd here tonight for this local derby, which is so crucial for Arsenal. So Arsenal get us underway. Davis, for the moment, lost that ball, but Tony Adams was behind him. Arsenal just about the most consistent side in the first division this season. No, really, that the championship battle is firmly in their hands. Three wins in the last four will carry with it the title, whatever Liverpool do. Go to uh, Queen's Park Rangers. Donald, Donald playing it to Peacock, a judged offside. That must have been a close run thing because Winterburn was hanging back a little bit. Free kick to Arsenal. Stuart Houston is the coach here at Ivory, George Graham's right hand man. He's curling a good ball here for Winterburn. Merson still staying on this left hand side with Limpar away on the right. Here's Merson. And Bartley holding him up at the expense this time of a corner. 
raising the hopes of the North Bank behind uh, Queen's Park Rangers' goal. Limpar will take it. Hold of the near post. Adams and Smith, a couple of six-footers in the area too. It came off McDonald. And Merson couldn't get a touch on it. In the end, it's Simon Barker getting it up to Andy Sinton. Revit. Look at the break by Wilkins. But uh, Winterburn have gone across their well. This is good stuff. Campbell chasing after this one. McDonald! Oh, my goodness. Campbell just needed to get a touch on that one. Revit to Sinton. Gregory. Revit continued the run, the young fullback. Into Wegley again. Rangers have got a few up as well. Sinton's cross. Peacock won't get to it. And a chance for Merson to bring it away. Good bit of play there. And it's Winterburn who suddenly pops up in a forward position. Smith now. And now for Campbell. Good flowing stuff here from Arsenal. Campbell shots. Stash got down. I think probably it may have just gone outside. George Graham normally spends the whole of the first half in the uh, director's box, comes down in the second half, but uh, obviously something is displeasing, as you can see. In goes Bold. Here's Campbell. A shot on the turn, charged down. Arsenal claiming a penalty. John Moles had a good look at it. And said no penalty. certainly hit at Maddox's arm, but I think the referee probably decided there was certainly no intention. It was a case of ball hitting arm, and not arm hitting ball. But Arsenal's certainly looking good form at the moment. So important, really, for their championship prospects that they put behind them, the disappointment of that uh, semi-final defeat. And the 2-2 draw here just after it against Manchester City when they let slip a two-goal lead. It really is a night for getting down to big business and making it a three-point night. Well, they've got this free kick. Davis hitting it towards Steve Bowl. Smith, no, Adams. Oh. Well, there was a real chance there. A bell to Tony Adams, probably cursing himself. Shake of the head as he goes back. Played there by Paul Davis. Up goes Bold. Adams turned his man well. And Barker now can start a breakaway for QPR. He's got Sinton up alongside him. Hilliard getting back as quickly as he can. It's Andy Sinton waiting for Wilkins to come up. And now with Roy Wegley. Oh, he's done his man nicely there. Oh, and that call for a good save. Excellent work by Seaman. And a terrific bit of play by Wiggly too. The way he just outwitted Winterburn here, there. And then rifled in that shot that would have just crept in. Half-time whistle. A really entertaining first half. With Arsenal having much the better of it and playing some good football into the bargain. But Rangers defending superbly throughout that uh, 45 minutes. Good handling by Steichkal in the Rangers' goal. And good work all round by the men in the hoops. But Arsenal still looking then for a goal that might bring three points. At half-time, it's still Arsenal nil, Queen's Park Rangers nil.